Good day, everyone. It is May 24, 2018. Happy noon hour. So in this segment, I'm going to be talking about climate change, but in particular, I'm going to be talking about some rare events that have been occurring in the Arabian Sea and about a tropical cyclone by the name of Makunu that is now threatening Oman as it moves through the Western Arabian Sea. But before we do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about why we call climate change climate change and, and why and how climate change produces new effects. So this region of the world where we've where we saw Makunu develop and another tropical cyclone that also developed just, a, just a, about a week ago um, is a region of the world where we don't see hurricanes and tropical storms form. And when I say that, it, it appears that climatologically we don't have a record of forms uh, of storms forming in this region, and I'll I'll call attention to typical climatology for the Arabian Sea, and and according to Wikipedia, the the Arabian Sea, which borders the Arabian Peninsula, peninsula typically spawns tropical cyclones in the southeast portion of the body of water offshore of Western India. And so that would be in this region here, if you look at the, the map, right? So it says 48% of cyclones dissipate, dissipate before making land, landfall or moving offshore. And around one in three storms move toward the Arabian Peninsula. So it's, it's pretty rare in general that the Arabian Peninsula will get storms. But I'm gonna call your attention to the final sentence, which is the real ringer here. It says, however, storms do not form in the Western Arabian Sea because of cool sea surface temperatures, which are the result of strong winds from the monsoon, as well as dry air over the Arabian Peninsula. Okay, so let's think about that. According to climatology, we don't see storms form in this region at all, at least according to this statement from Wikipedia. Now it's possible that a storm has formed at some point, maybe, but uh, based on the information that I'm looking at, it doesn't look like it's happened, except for this year. So so let's let's take a closer look at where these storms have formed. I'm going to look at first the uh, a report from Wikipedia on tropical cyclone Sagar, and we'll look at the map to give you an idea of where this storm formed. So this body of water out here is the Arabian Sea. The Eastern Arabian Sea is over closer to India. The Western Arabian Sea composes this region near Oman, Yemen, and Somalia. And so Sagar formed right there smack dab in the Arabian Sea in the region of the Gulf of Yemen. So this storm formed in a region where we don't see cyclones form. And again, with Mikunu, I'm gonna look at the joint typhoon warning, warning center map. We find that Mikunu formed right here in the Western Arabian Sea just to the east of Somalia and to the south, south and east of Oman and Yemen. So, so to be very clear, we just had two tropical cyclones that formed in a region of the world where we have not had a record or much record at all of storms ever forming in this region. And as was stated earlier, the reason why storms do not tend to form in this region, according to the climatologists, is that this region of the ocean tends to be cooler and that very dry air tends to hover over the Arabian Peninsula here to the north. So, so let's look at some of these dynamics. Presently, if you look at sea surface temperatures in the 
Western Arabian Sea. We find that sea surface temperatures are in the range of 30 degrees Celsius. Now this is, um, when you convert to Fahrenheit, this is in the upper 80s. And these are, for any region of the world, these are very warm sea surface temperatures, sea surface temperatures that would be enough to typically support a tropical cyclone if it did form and also to support very high peak potential intensity. Now, if you look here just off the, the coast of Somalia, sea surface temperatures really get a lot warmer. Up to nearly, yep, up to 34 degrees Celsius. And they, these are blazing hot sea surface temperatures for the surface of the Earth. Rarely see sea, sea surface temperatures uh, above 32 degrees Celsius, and, and 35 degrees Celsius is, is practically unheard of. So, so 34 degrees Celsius or, or edging into the mid 34 degrees Celsius range is, is, is really pretty insane. So switching over to the sea surface temperature anomaly map, we find that sea surface temperatures in this region east of Somalia are about five, up to, up to about five degrees Celsius above average. And that's, that's really, really warm, uh, much warmer than normal. A typical excursion in, in, in a normal climate, uh, a typical high excursion would be about two degrees Celsius. And here, south of the Arabian Peninsula, we find that sea surface temperatures are also warmer than normal in the one to close to two degrees Celsius range. And this is, I'm looking at a time frame just um, during which the first tropical cyclone formed. So if we go back, we might even see warmer sea surface temperatures potentially in this region because uh, storms tend to bring upwelling. So yeah, if you go two days back, sea surface temperatures were, were a little bit warmer in this region south of the Arabian Peninsula. But uh, as Makunu was forming, we were seeing very warm sea surface temperatures east of Somalia and, and very high sea surface temperature anomalies. So, so what this means is that there's a lot of potential energy for storms, but it doesn't mean that storms will necessarily form. And one of the big inhibitors to storm development is dry air. So as we saw before with typical climatology, the, the Arabian Peninsula here has tended to be very dry, but as Makunu was forming, the Arabian Peninsula was not so dry. We saw relatively high atmospheric levels of precipitable moisture over the Arabian Peninsula. And so there wasn't the typical inhibitor to storm formation. Now, this year we've seen some pretty intense storms forming in this region of the world from about, um, say the Middle East to South Asia to, to parts of uh, north northeast africa here and primarily this is due to a very intense uh, sub subtropical jet stream and i'll go ahead and look at that for this time of year uh, which which has tended to dip down from europe over the mediterranean dig up some moisture and then dive down over the middle east and and this region here and and, and that flow has also provided uh, a, a relatively high, higher than typical levels of moisture over the Arabian Peninsula. So, so what we see just looking at these climatological features is that the, the typical dynamics that would inhibit storms in the Western Arabian Sea, meaning cooler sea surface temperatures and dry air over the Arabian Peninsula are not in place. And in addition, this strong subtropical jet is providing some instability here. So, so the likelihood of, of storm formation is a bit higher because instability adds a little extra kick. So, so what we're seeing is, is that climatology for this region is not typical. And, and that's the very definition of climate change. If clim climatology changes, the climate has changed.